Now, John, quickly, I want to go back to January of 2016. Very interesting time. There were still at that point about a dozen Republican candidates running for president of the United States. And God gave you a dream. What did he say to you in that dream? It was a very surprising dream. In this dream, I saw Donald Trump being given the contract to restore the Department of Homeland Security representing America. And in this dream, he went to a back portion of the campus and I saw the gates of Homeland Security open and black women and Hispanic women came shouting through the gates, praising God for what was transpiring. Um, and that was the dream that I had. And then President Trump came back through and uh, I looked at him and I said, sir, you must restore Christmas. Strangest dream. I woke up thinking I had had too much pizza the night before. <laughs> then the Lord began to speak to me. I, had, I wasn't very familiar at the time with Donald Trump. I'd never seen his uh, reality TV show or anything mm -hmm. like that. Uh, he was a face in the crowd to me. I knew that some prophetic... So he wasn't your guy at that point? No, he wasn't... not at all. <laughs> no, I expected maybe Marco Rubio to mm -hmm. really take the lead. <clears throat> but so it was unexpected. But when I had that dream and prayed about it, the Lord made it clear that President Trump was his choice to be a catalyst for the turnaround that he wanted to bring to Washington, D.C. and the nation. Now, at that point, you and your wife, Jolene, had already planned this big tour, a 50-state turnaround tour. Tell me, what, what was the reason for that? Well, the Lord had given us a passage of Scripture that has become a hallmark to our focus for the nation. Daniel 7.22. In Daniel 7.21, the saints are facing opposition. The enemy is waging war on the saints and overpowering them until the Ancient of Days takes his seat. Judgment is rendered in favor of the saints, Daniel 7, 22, and the time arrives for the saints to possess the kingdom. And we felt like God was giving a significant grace in this season to bring a turnaround of some, a similar magnitude where instead of the saints being marginalized, opposed, uh, disenfranchised, the gates open all of a sudden as a uh, response to a verdict from heaven's court. And these same disenfranchised saints are released to possess the kingdom, the governmental seats of authority. So when you would go from state to state, what, what did you actually do? Well, we went to all 50 states primarily by train. Hmm. And, um, we would minister from state to state. As part of that ministry, we would declare the turnaround that God was bringing as a verdict from heaven's court to bless the saints of this hour in alignment with our covenantal foundations as a nation to really bring America back to God. Now, based on the dream that you had, did you feel like Donald Trump being elected was going to be part of that turnaround? Yes, absolutely. I knew that President Trump was uh, chosen by God to be a catalyst of this turnaround. Absolutely. Well, let's talk about him for a moment, because when you think about the church and you think about Christians and then you think about some things that Donald Trump has said or tweeted or done, you know, is it is it appropriate for Christians to be praying for or supporting Donald Trump? Well, I think it's appropriate for Christians to be praying for anybody that God sets in authority. Yes, absolutely. And for President Trump, he has confessed Christ privately behind the scenes. He has done more to advance the Judeo-Christian values that we uphold than any president in modern history. Now, did you did you pray for President Obama? Oh, I prayed for President Obama night and day, actually, yes. <laughs> mm. uh, he was, he captured my heart as the first African-American president. He had tremendous zeal. He has uh, just a brilliant mind, tremendous potential. He has been a phenomenal father to his children and a phenomenal husband uh, to his wife. Uh, and in many ways, he's an amazing role model. I absolutely disagreed with most of his policies. Now, uh, you have called President Trump 
Cy like Cyrus. Now Cyrus, uh, you know, he's talked about in the Bible, in Isaiah 45, right. interesting number, 45, <laughs> just like uh, Trump is the 45th president. Right. But why, why would you call him a Cyrus or a type of Cyrus? Well, you know, in order to understand um, that question, we have to look at the call of Cyrus. A primary distinction of Cyrus in uh, the Bible was a decree that he had established that established religious freedom throughout the entire kingdom, uh, from Greece to Babylon to uh, the nation that is now Iraq, um, Phoenicia, Israel, Egypt, that whole empire was ruled by him. And he allowed the people to uh, follow the dictates of their heart. And one of the primary pillars of the Trump administration has become religious freedom. I think it's absolutely supernatural mm. that a man like Donald Trump, you, you just wouldn't expect this from him. And yet he has championed religious freedom nationally and also internationally, um, confronting uh, like the nation of Turkey regarding uh, the holding of pastors like Andrew Brunson. He, he worked behind the scenes to free Andrew Brunson. In China with uh, not just persecuted Christians, but persecuted uh, Muslims, the Uyghurs. Uh, you look at uh, the fact that President Trump held the first ever symposium on religious freedom at the United Nations in 2019. It had never been done at the United Nations in, in what, 40 years. Mm. So, I mean, this is, President Trump always takes ground that is, uh, there's a courageous stand involved, and he's done that absolutely for the community of faith nationally and worldwide. Well, John, we're gonna take a break right here. When we come back, um, if Donald Trump is a Cyrus, then John would say every Cyrus needs a Daniel. And that's where you come in. So join us in just a moment. Welcome back to Something More. I'm Bob Duvall here with John Hamill. And before we went to the break, we were talking about President Trump being like a Cyrus, like in the Bible, you know, the Persian ruler. And, and uh, you know, that was the time that the Israelites were set free from Babylonian captivity. And then also when uh, the order was given to rebuild the temple. So, and when we took the break, we said, every Cyrus needs a Daniel. Now, everybody's familiar with Daniel in the Bible and Daniel in the lion's den and so on. And uh, tell me, John, how does that apply in this case? What is, what is a Daniel? How does that fit in with the Cyrus? Well, the Lord highlighted the Daniel-Cyrus partnerships in a very unusual way. Uh, on January 20th of 2019, it happened to be the third anniversary of President Trump's inauguration. Um, a blood moon appeared in the skies over Washington, D.C. at midnight. It came to fullness at exactly 1212, actually. Hmm. And um, we know from the Bible, from Joel chapter 2 and other verses, that blood moons are demarcations of something significant in history. And the Lord had given my wife, Jolene, uh, a few uh, weeks before the passage in Daniel uh, that talks about in the third year of Cyrus, king of Persia, a message was revealed. And we knew the Lord was highlighting uh, Daniel's intercession for Cyrus. He prayed during the third year of Cyrus, king of Persia. He actually went into three weeks of fasting and prayer mm. for God to move because the whole uh, restoration movement that Cyrus had initiated to restore the people of God from Babylon to Jerusalem and also to restore the temple and restore the city of Jerusalem itself was under siege. And so Daniel fasted and prayed 21 days for breakthrough. And we knew that the Lord was calling us in same measure to come alongside President Trump in prayer for the entire year of 2019 and see the breakthrough that God intended. Now, have there been actual things that have happened? I mean, not just, uh, you know, you prayed and you kind of hoped, that, but have, have there been actual breakthroughs and connections with those prayers? 
There have been several in, in 2019. Well, and, and let's back up even further. Right before he was elected, tell me about that, because right before the election, things were kind of looking bad. <laughs> in fact, who, who was picking him at that point? You know, it was a pretty small number. And uh, you, you all got called to Trump Tower to pray? Tell me about that. We were on this glory train journey and got a call from uh, a lady who we had prophesied over. She was in a small service at, at the time when I shared, and she was wearing a hoodie. And I went up and prayed for her, and I saw the doors of the White House opening for this lady. And uh, so we didn't know that she had taken that prophecy seriously. So she actually got on board as a volunteer with the Trump campaign in, in 2016. Mm -hmm. uh, she did so well, they brought her to New York to the main campaign headquarters. And we were on the glory train. We were on the turnaround tour journey and got a call from our friend. And she said, you've got to come to uh, New York City to campaign headquarters and pray because there was widespread despondency after what some people call the locker room tapes were very strategically released. I'm not okay with any expression of immorality, but the fact that this was brought up at, at just the very moment that uh, President Trump was uh, coming into the elections. I mean, it was like a week and a half before the so elections. So you got to actually go to Trump Tower and, and what? what? What did you do? Well, our friend brought us up to campaign headquarters. It was pretty empty at the time. It was um, on a Sunday. And um, we prayed the Daniel 722 passage I just referenced, mm. where judgment is rendered in favor of the saints. And we knew that God was rendering judgment in favor of the saints across the nation who had prayed so ardently during the previous season of, of difficulty praying for the realignment of our nation's government with the Judeo-Christian values that made us great in the first place. Mm. Now, John, one of the terms that you like to use is watchman. Watchman. What, what is that? What does that mean? Well, Daniel was a watchman for Cyrus. Let me give uh, you an example of that watchman anointing. When he received revelation immediately, he began to fast and pray until God broke through. And that's an assignment for watchmen um, to hear the heart of God, be gripped by not just the, the mind of uh, a person, but by the heart of God. And that determines your, uh, your focus and destiny in, in intercession. Now, we're living, I think most people would agree with this, that we're living in very interesting times, important times, uh, but even beyond that, there's something spiritual going on. 2020, when we're recording this interview, is actually the 400th anniversary of something. Tell me about that real quickly. It is such a significant year. You know, last year, 2019, marked the 400th anniversary of the first slaves coming to our nation. It was a, 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 a travesty. But after 400 years in Scripture, uh, during the days of Exodus, God brought a freedom movement and brought his people out of subjugation. And we knew that this season was a season for a breakthrough for a freedom movement. And that said, 2020, November 11th, 2020, marks the date where our forefathers, the pilgrims, cut covenant with the Lord Jesus Christ for the land and government that we now know as the but, United States. But John, States. that was a long time ago. That was hundreds of years. How does that even apply for me today? Well, God is a generational God. Mm. You know, in Psalm 132, uh, uh, the plea is made, Lord, remember the afflictions of your servant David, how he swore to the Lord and vowed to the mighty one of Jacob, no rest for my eyes and no slumber for my eyelids until I find a place for the Lord, a dwelling place for the mighty God of Jacob. And David asked God to remember his covenant generationally. And so God upholds and enforces the pleas, the prayers, and the covenants of his friends, not just for a flash in time, but these are generational covenants that God wants to establish. And he wants to bring the same blessing and the same miracles that former generations experienced. He wants to bring it into our own. Mm. 
That's the power of covenant. He's an everlasting God, and His covenant is everlasting. That's good. We're going to take one more quick break. When we come back, I'm going to have John pray for President Trump so you can hear how he does it. And also, I want him to pray for you. I hope that you are beginning to feel a need to be a watchman. Come right back after this. Call now and get John Hamill's brand new eye-opening book, White House Watchman, and John and Jolene Hamill's exclusive three-part audio series, 20 Prophecies for the 2020s. This is an exclusive offer for our It's Supernatural audience. Yours for a donation of $35. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9700. John Hamill's book, White House Watchman, will unveil 20 groundbreaking prophetic priorities that reveal heaven's strategy for the coming days. Spiritually secure your perimeter and and operate in authority in prayer. Equip you for secret service in the spirit as a special ops prayer warrior. Empower God's people to postpone Armageddon. Reveal how covenant restoration establishes heaven's governmental blessing in your household, family, and nation. You will also receive John and Jolene Hamill's exclusive three-part audio CD series, 20 Prophecies for the 2020s. The prophecies cover the future of America and the upcoming election. There will be a historic sweep, an upset in the House and Senate. There will be an awakening and covenant consecration. It will affect America, Israel, the United Kingdom, and will eventually affect many nations. God intends for nations to be completely turned around to see freedom, prosperity, and justice restored. Genuine repentance will manifest on leaders and society. Dictatorships will fall. Nations will be born again. Entire regions will be lifted out of recession and poverty. God is calling you to be His prophetic change agent in this unprecedented moment in history. Now is your time to receive the Watchman Mantle for this hour. Pray powerful, earth-shaking prayers that will hit Heaven's target every time. Don't miss out on getting John Hamill's brand new eye-opening book, White House Watchman, and John and Jolene Hamill's exclusive three-part audio series, 20 Prophecies for the 2020s. This is an exclusive offer for our It's Supernatural audience. Yours for a donation of $35. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9700. Call or you can send your check to Sid Roth, It's Supernatural, P.O. Box 39222, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28278. Please specify offer number 9700 or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today. Welcome back to Something More. And uh, John, w with President Trump, one of the things that he did that was very significant was he moved the U.S. Embassy in Israel to Jerusalem. Yeah. Why is that so significant? Well, you know, he, in his statement, he said that it's up to sovereign nations to determine the capital, the cities that they want to have the capital. And so just from a point where Washington, D.C. backed off from trying to rule Jerusalem, that's very significant. Mm -hmm. But just like Cyrus, uh, restored Jerusalem and restored the worship in Jerusalem to the Jewish people, allowed them to worship God as they desired. And America's Cyrus, Donald Trump, did the very same thing. He stood against 40 years of global diplomacy uh, and said, no, we're going to honor Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. He later did the same thing actually on Purim of 2019 with the Golan Heights. We were actually in the old executive office building hmm. when President Trump tweeted <laughs> that he decided to honor the sovereignty of Israel over the Golan Heights on Purim. Mm. Very significant. Now, you live in the Washington, D.C. area. Now, your view provokes me to jealousy. <laughs> and I think it would most people, because from where you live, you can see the White House, the Capitol, the Lincoln Memorial, the Potomac River. What else? What else can you see? Is that well? We much can see view? virtually, yeah. The State Department. We can see the. It, it's just a stunning view. And I make it probably makes it easy to pray, right? <laughs> you can. <see>. Well, you <laughs> know, this sounds funny, Bob. But for the first week, I didn't even want to go back to our bedroom. I just wanted to be there and see D.C. at night. It was so spectacular. And then the reality of what we were seeing set in and the responsibility. We, we felt the weight of the challenges that the administration was facing. And um, 
it became a catalyst for fervent intercession and uh, prophetic intervention. Now, sometimes even that great view hasn't been enough. You've actually done like prayer walks around the White House. We've done prayer walks privately. We've interfaced with government leaders, of course, um, and continue to do so. Uh, it's amazing how the Trump administration has opened the doors to the faith community. That's another aspect of his administration that's virtually without precedence. Now, when you pray, when you intercede for President Trump and other leaders, what do you do? I mean, are there certain scriptures you confess over them? Do you just kind of listen? What God, what are you saying right now? How, what are the kind of things you pray? Well, we generally, the last thing we do is pray the headlines. What we try to do is just worship the Lord, come into that place of intimacy with the Lord. And from that place, we pray what we sense to be God's heart for the person for that day. If we're praying the headlines, we're behind. Mm. We have to pray a good point. with real-time revelation from the Lord mm -hmm. that counteracts what the enemy is trying to do and empowers what God's trying to do. Do you ever pray in tongues for President Trump? You know, we have come to believe that tongues is like encrypted communication from the Lord that mm. completely bypasses our own mind, as well as in the realms of the spirit, the, the forces of darkness that would try to thwart the prayers. Remember, Daniel was was resisted by forces of darkness that were trying to keep God's purposes from coming to pass. And there is nothing better than praying in the Holy Spirit, praying with, with tongues and then receiving the interpretation. If you ask, you'll get it. It may take a while, but you'll get it. Okay. Yeah. Now, John, we have just a little bit of time left, but I, I do want you to pray just briefly for President Trump. And then I like for you to pray for the person watching who's saying, Yes, I get it. I want to be part of the answer. I want to be part of the turnaround because we've seen things happen as far as that turnaround, but it's not a done deal. It's not over and we need to pray into it. So pray for President Trump and also for that viewer. Sure. So Father God, in the name of Jesus, we humble ourselves before you and we thank you for President Trump. We thank you for the tremendous gains that have been made uh, it, it, during his uh, time in office so far. And we just pray Psalm 91 over President Trump, Vice President Pence, uh, the teams that he has assembled, his family. Lord, we just declare that he dwells in the secret place of the Most High. He abides under the shadow of the Almighty. We declare a protective shield against the, the occult forces that are trying to uh, bring confusion, chaos, and to bind him. We declare in Jesus' name that they themselves are bound and that he is released to hear from you, to be refreshed by you, your presence, your Holy Spirit, and to receive clarity and direction from you that shapes the course of the nation according to your heart. And we declare according to Psalm 91 that as he dwells in the secret place of the Most High and abides under your shadow, Lord, we declare in the name of Jesus Christ that you deliver him from the snare of every trapper in Jesus' name. Where traps have been laid, we declare covenantally and governmentally deliverance from the snare of the trapper as well as from the deadly pestilence. And we pray this for everybody that is on uh, the uh, viewing this uh, message right now in the name of Jesus. And we just ask, Father God, that you grace the people watching to become White House watchmen, Lord, to keep watch, to keep their hearts genuine in forgiveness and love and in intercession for not only President Trump, but also for the entire executive branch that is shaping the course of our nation in Jesus name. Amen. What about you? I want to challenge you right now. It, it doesn't matter what your schedule is like, even if you're super busy, you can find time to be a watchman, to be an intercessor. And you know what? It might mean tuning out some of social media, some of the news and tuning in to God because First and foremost, you're a throne room watchman. You need to hear from God and then pray what you hear him saying. And most of all, if you don't even know him, that's where you need to start. Turn to him today. Make today 
the first day of your salvation and become part of God's turnaround. And join us again next time for something more.